Dave here. How are you? Today is the 11th of, let me see, January, February, March, March 2018, Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Now, in the next few weeks, we're going to see the start time change around a little bit as countries in the Northern Hemisphere opt into daylight saving. And then not long after that, I think it's Easter, Australia or the Eastern States, and I think maybe one or two of the others are going to be going falling backwards. That's the way they, the way they say it. No, talk properly. Uh, it is spring forward. So you go one hour forward with your clocks. And in Australia, the country, oh, sorry, the states that are doing daylight saving will be falling backwards. So there you go. Now I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping as I always do here. I will change how things are happening there. And then I will open up the chat because I'm sure it's there. And anyone who's here, if you can let me know if the show is coming through well, that'd be great. I'll minimize that one, which leaves the chat up there for me. And the last thing I have to do is I have to expand it up in size so I can see what's happening. There we go. Now, can everyone see me here? I'm hoping all. I'm hoping so. Morning, David, and all everybody else from Michael. I'll have a quick read through here. Loopy head. Hey, I'm first. Can't, <laughs> can't believe it. Jay Parry, you're second. Um, Ralph, third. Zane, yes, but nine waiting. Only five thumbs up. How about we do the thumbs up? Because today is going to be a very, very special show. I have some interesting things to show from Yellow Box Shed. And, you know, it's probably going to fill the show because there are so many products that John has really put his head around and he's been helped by Steve Innes and they've been sending some product up to me to test. And so they launched the website yesterday and today I, I'm going to be doing kind of a, a secondary launch. Um, all good. Audio and video, both good. Excellent. There we go. Now, uh, <laughs> everything is good. That's great. So hi from Denmark. Uh, morning, John. Dave M from Wisconsin. Uh, Brian Moore from Missouri. Uh, greens from Northern Kentucky, Carl, and and and, and I'm sure there's more there. Uh, I spy a tape holder. You do spy a tape holder. There it is. This is one of John's products. Look at that. How cool is that? Now we're going to get into more of that in a minute. That's my little um, Bessie tape, and it's very very accurate straight away there. And you might also spy up here. You probably can't quite see it, but it's one of the special little. Uh, Festool handle inserts that go in that John is also making to order. So, so, so cool. All right. Let me have a look. What have we got here? Ah, the winner of the IMAFs will be announced. Was it you? Was it you? You know, I'm not going to do it right at the beginning of the show because you all might bugger off and say, oh, I never won the muffs. <laughs> IMAFs. I've got to keep remembering to call them IMAFs. I noticed in one of the videos, or probably the last video, I was talking about earmuffs. Well, they're eye muffs, eye muffs, eye muffs. And aren't they a great product? Um, yellow box shed 3D printed woodworking accessories to work with the Stanton bench, all set up here waiting. So that'll be coming along very, very soon. Uh, Stanley number 4.5, disassemble and rebuild. And that is going to be the first thing that we do. So that is sitting on the bench, ready for me to go. I've checked the streams running well. Uh, interesting things from the week chat and more if I can squeeze it in. Viewers projects. Uh, well, you know, this is a hell of a project that John's done. Uh, the, the first part of the chat is show for, uh, is generally chat, I should say. The first part of the show. I'm too excited. Uh, forgive me. Um, okay, if you haven't watched the show before, the first part, you know, first five to ten minutes, a bit of chat. We'll jump into demonstrations very early in the piece and then I'll come back and do a bit more chat and we'll do a little bit more demonstration as well. So the first thing will be the Stanley plane. If you're interested, and I'll, I've also got a diagram of all the parts. And it's something that, you know, I've, I needed to study up on. <clears throat> but I have a picture there and I'll throw that up for you very soon. What else, what else, what else? Um, keep the channel afloat by using the links in the description area below the video. As I was saying, if you've got a mobile phone and you hold it up that way, there's a little thing you can click under it and it will expose all of the text that I've thrown in there as well. You know, it just keeps the... Th keeps the wheels on the gears lubricated keeps them turning because uh, you know i enjoy eating <laughs> strange that isn't it <laughs> um also 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 uh, john has made some other things 
he blows me away with what he's making. Uh, for, for, for going straight on to a Festool or a Makita or a Triton rail for a track saw, brilliant. Um, photos from where you're watching or projects you are building in your shop. If you can send photos into me to davestantonfans at gmail.com. There's no AU or after it, after it, it's just dot com. Uh, and also animals in your shop pics, please. Now I often get birds pop into the store, if not into my shop store. What am I saying? See in Australia, we see a shop as a store, you know, a shop where you go and buy things. We don't see a shop as a, a work shop or a shed. We, we, we call this room here a shed or a garage, let's be honest. <laughs> what else have we got? I think that's about it. Let's have a quick look from interesting things from the week. And I think it'll be fine. Let's have a look. Now, this is autumn in my backyard at the moment. That is a Canadian maple. It's one of the first trees to start changing its color. Now, I think I've got some other things here. That's right. I've took some photos of my garage. This is outside the workshop. And I look at it and I go, what a mess. And I know that some people are saying, Dave, that's not a mess. Now, you'll notice I'm starting to move things around a little bit. Thank heavens those cabinets are on wheels. Now, you see the Dexian pallet racking over in the corner on the right. I'm going to put that on wheels as well so I can start getting a whole lot more function. Now, the video I did yesterday was on the Vixbit, and that picture's there to show you the different size drills and screws that it'll take. In Australia, we don't have number three and number four screws. Okay. This is my little dingo from a couple of weeks ago, the stump grinding episode. Now you see the effort that I put into that machine and it picks me right up. Now I snapped one of the rams. Look at that. This is the, this is the auxiliary ram that actually actuates the bucket forwards and backwards and opens and closes the four in one bucket. And it snapped clean off. So, you know, I've had that machine for about 20 years. I did put that ram on around about 10 years ago. So I'm going to have to go down to my local agricultural area and get a hold of a new ram. So they, it's all good fun, isn't it? But that machine's been brilliant. It's a very, very nice machine. Let's have a quick look at the read and uh, we'll see what's happening here. Uh, Martin, morning day view is coming through loud and clear. DST, uh, daylight savings time, hasn't arrived in Brisbane yet. Well, you may get it when you come out of the dark ages. Come on guys, get with the plot. So you're closer to the equator, it doesn't affect you as much. And I keep on saying to people, I reckon daylight savings is us about, pardon my French, but I think we should have daylight savings during winter, not during, not during summer. That would balance out the end of the day. I don't mind getting up in the dark, I do it all the time. I'm up at 4.30, 5 o'clock every morning, you know, during the week, uh, because that's just how I am. Every now and then I'll have a sleep into seven o'clock on the weekend maybe, if I have time, if I can give myself that luxury. Um, okay, where are we? Where are we? I've just jumped a heap. Um, greetings from Florida. Uh, forever number one, Giovanni. Thank you, Swedish. Uh, watching you from my hospital bed. Ah, oh, the Swedish hand. Okay, car hit me while I was riding my motorcycle, missing my wood shop. So I watch you make something. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. Saying wasn't me. <laughs> get Didn't get around to it. Okay. Um, such a cool blue that new handle is. Yes, it is. Morning, everyone, Steve. Morning to you, Steve, as well. Uh, there's a few things here. I'm going to switch. Look, there's more chat there. I'll come back to it in a second. But I did promise that we were going to disassemble a plane. And there it is. It's sitting on the bench waiting for me. That's my little four and a half Stanley. And I'm also going to throw this picture up straight away. Now that is, I'm moving around to the other side of the frame while that's happening. Have a bit of a look at that children while I get things organized here. <laughs> so you need to study up. And as I was saying the other day, when I am over here, I've got the camera aimed down here, so you're going to actually see what I'm doing. Now, this is a Stanley four and a half. You'll notice that it doesn't have the orange textured paint or the orange paint behind the name to highlight it because I soaked this for a long time in a cleaning solution and it was so good 
it took away the paint. So I'm going to have to do that. And I'm wondering whether I should go back to orange or maybe I'll get a blue nail polish and put that in. That could look pretty sexy. So first thing to do, first thing to do is we remove the cap iron, is that? Or the clamp. And then I'll take out the blade on the the iron as well. So that's the, the backing iron, I think. And I will take off the handle. Like so. And I will undo the frog. That's what this, this guy here, down inside, so you can see it. I'll bring it up closer first before I take it off. So this guy here, this whole assembly, is called the frog. And there's a couple of screws. One here and one there, as you can see it. So I'm going to undo those. Because <clears throat> a lot of the time people say, oh yeah, it's a plane. And they've got oh, glasses help. And it's always nice to know, know how your... your um, I was going to say how your tool works, but uh, let's say how your product uh, functions. They're the two screws that hold it in. This guy here, I'll tip it over on its side a little bit further so you can see it. That screw there, you can't really see it relief too much, but it is the one that this goes onto with the blade, etc., underneath. Now, around the back here is also another little screw and that and you can see in the in the foot or the body of the plane is another screw right here now that screw has got uh, it's an adjuster I can I can tighten that up it's a pretty tight fit I can tighten it up or loosen it off and that adjusts the position of the frog via that so it will move the frog along inside the body of the plane now that's important because it needs to line up with the back so that when the frog is in here, and you might be able to see it a bit better there, the frog needs to rest on those two pieces without actually going past the, that area there, which is the opening or the mouth, I think they call that, of the plane. Now let's go crazy and open this up as well. Now this is the handle screw, and then there's another screw right here that goes down inside the handle. Now on the number three and number four, you only have this one. You don't have that smaller one at the front. And now it comes. See it hanging out the end there? So that's basically the body of the plane with maybe two screws left in it. So that's how it comes out of the casting. And then from there on, they hit it. So when I come to clean this one up again, I'm going to hit this with, I think they call it Black Japan. <laughs> Loglin 2, you go granddad. I wonder if that's one of my grandchildren with a funny name. Loglin, maybe I think that might be Lockie. Hey, Lockie, how are you, buddy? Um, <clears throat> that's throwing me. I've never had one of the grandkids drop into the show while I'm doing it. But anyway, there you go. Uh, Gary, you yourself might get up, sent to the corner. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm having a quick read. I'm having a quick read. Hi, Dave. What do you think of Powermatic 15 Helical Head 15-inch Deluxe Planer with Bird Shell X Color Head? Thinking of getting it. James, it's a very, very, very nice machine. Well worth the investment. Now, some people say, oh, look, if, is this a Bailey plane or a Stanley plane? Well, Bailey and Stanley are the same. I think Bailey are the ones that were made in England. And you can see there it has written made in England. If you've got some more um, information, please throw it up in the chat. And I'm going to see if the chat will stay this week as well. Now, what happens is if I make a stuff up during the show, I will edit it out for the recording because no one wants to watch it in a recording. They'll, they'll leave. <laughs> so uh, if I edit the show, the chat will disappear. So I'm going to try and do it this week so that none of the chat disappears. So you'll be able to read it and kind of enjoy the experience like the show as it's happening uh, if you watch a copy. Okay, Gary, off to the corner. Yes. 
Uh, Brian, off to the corner as well. Yes, Dunce's cap, eh? Now, that's, did you know why they call it a fool's cap? Why they call paper a fool's cap paper? It's because, <laughs> it's because um, it's a piece of fool's cap paper. You roll it up and you, they put it on your head and that you were the fool, the class fool. Now, uh, let me see. I think I've got something else for you to show you. And that is, John, when he made this handle up and sent it up to me, because he said, I just a, just a stab in the dark, but I think you like blue, Dave. So there we go. This He made this handle as well. Now, this will fit perfectly in on a three or a four, but it will not fit a four and a half. It will, it will go on, but there's no hole at the front for the front screw. And it's not quite long enough. Now, I'm sure if John wanted to, he could make another handle that is similar to my four and a half. So you can see them side by side. And you can see the reach on my four and a half is longer down here where I'm pointing with my little pinky than the blue one. Uh, I got to notice that the chat would stay when I opened up this week. Excellent. Well, there you go. Hopefully it will. As I say, only if I don't edit the show. If I edit the show, we lose the chat. So everyone be good and I'll try not to stuff up. Okay, now I'm going to start putting the little bad boy back together if I can, and we'll actually try and plane with it. Well, before I take do that, I will open this part up again. I'm hoping this isn't boring everyone. But I did put in the comments that we would be doing. So there's the blade, and this is a bevel down plane. Now you can get bevel down and bevel up. And this blade is a beautiful sharp blade. Now I am looking at getting another blade. Hopefully I can get a hold of a PMV 11. Were you aware that Veritas also make blades for Stanley planes? And they do do a PMV 11. And you might say to me, Dave, what the hell's a PMV 11? Um, now PM, post, uh, post something, post metallurgy or something like that. But what they did, powdered, powdered metallurgy. Okay, so PMV Veritas 11, and 11 is because there was a show called Spinal Tap, and in Spinal Tap, the guy said his amplifier is so good that he can, it up, he can turn it up to 11. That's how loud it goes. So there you go, <clears throat> PMV 11 blade, and they last a hell of a long time. So you put it in there, and you slide it back, and then you rotate it. So you can see where I am. You slide it back and rotate it and just back that off a little and let it come around. Don't try and force it across it because you may end up taking the edge off the, off the plane. Now I leave it around about one and a half millimeters. Tighten that up. So it's only a very short distance back to the cutting edge just here. Does Lee Nielsen make blades for standing? Well, look, um, Lee Valley does because Lee Valley and Veritas are basically the same animal. I'll tighten it up with the screwdriver. And then, as I say, it is a bevel down, which means the bevel on the blade is going to be facing down in the plane. And the backing iron is going to help create the little curly. So I'll just put that there. Then we'll put the handle back on. Do you find this stuff interesting? I, you know, it's one of those things I look at and I think, oh, I really do need to clean that up. I haven't got the grinder out here at the moment. I'll do that during the week. You take things for granted. It's the same as, I guess it's the same as if you own a car. I enjoy working on a car. Um, and I'm, what I can do on a car is, is restricted, of course, not like Ian Kerry, it's, who is just amazing, um, and can look at a car and go, yeah, well, that needs fixing. Um, but, you know, I enjoy being knowledgeable about how it all works. I know what a spark plug does. I know what a, um, an alternator does. I know that there's special steering geometry, so you don't have one wheel skids more than the other when you're turning, whole heap of things. Now, when I'm putting this back in, I have to make sure that that little guide there goes in between. You can see there's a little flange there. Um, Michael, Dave, what will you use to get the old paint off? I was thinking of using baking soda through the, Grip plaster because it's more gentle than sandblasting grip. Well, that could work. 
That's a pretty good idea. Um, I know that Vicky uses bicarb soda for just about anything for it as a cleaning product, but I have been using, there's a product down here. Give me a second, I'll have a quick look over here. Um, Evaporust, that's what I used last time. Evaporust, and for people in Australia, I just got it from Super Cheap Auto. While I'm doing this part, I'm going to flip back the parts here so you can see what's happening because this I don't want it to get too boring. Now while I'm doing this also, what do you think of the little video? It was only a short one about the um, VIX bit. It's a, it's a very handy little thing. If you're, if you're doing um, hinges, I love them because it, I, it always happens to me that whenever I put put a screw in a in a hinge, it goes off to the side and the knuckles twist it off at an angle on the hinge and it's never right, it's never right, it's never right. That's very annoying. Okay, uh, Lost Wizard took apart my number six about 10 years ago. One day I'll get it back together. <laughs> okay, I'll bring you back to the video of me actually doing this again. Uh, VIX equals good, indeed it does. So now you'll see that I've got the the plane there and there's a hollow here and that hollow is for this big cap screw or I think it's called a cap iron screw to go into and make sure that this is twisted around to being straight because it drops into that slot there to adjust the angle of the blade so if you I turn it this way it will adjust the blade that way and if I turn it this way it will go that way this guy here is we'll go into this see just there there's a little hole right in front of my fingernail and it retracts or pushes the blade upwards and downwards now i'm going to lay the blade flat at this lay the plane flat at this stage move that around so everything drops into place i do have the blade all the way down i better put this back on hadn't i what was the story there what was i thinking what was I thinking? How nice is that handle? It just sets it aside. I can look across the room and say, yep, that's my plane there. Tighten it up. And as I was saying the other day, it's nice to dress the screws so they're straight. Lovely. All right, now I've put the, um, the clamp on and you can adjust this screw up and down if you feel as though it's too tight. And then I pull, pull it back Again, it's still touching the base, that to the middle, unlock the clamp. Now, I can, at this stage, adjust for left and right. Watch the blade move. See it moving around behind the iron? There you go. Can it be used as a countersink? Um, no, you can't use the VIX as a countersink. Now, the other thing I do is I use a piece of white paper. I put the white paper down and I then can sight down the plane and see how far it's out and also if it needs adjusting. Now when you when you um, when you turn this screw here there'll be a whole lot of free play for a little while for around about three, two or three turns. That's just as it's taking up the slack. So I bring it back until the blade disappears and then I turn it back down again. What the plane as a <laughs> no, Steve. And then slowly I'll push my thumb against the screw from under here, like though, on the right hand side, and watch as the blade presents itself past. That's just starting to come out. I'm seeing one side coming up more than the other. Okay, now that's that. The plane is back together and I can put the plane down on this surface because I've got the Stanton bench here which has got those anti-slips so the blade isn't actually going to touch the timber. I can put it down there like that. Let's have a bit of a chat and then we're going to come back and hook into John Lafferty's stuff. And you guys are going to be absolutely st stonkered. I'm saying, what is stonkered? There we go, I'm back over here. So what do you think about that? It's fun to pull a machine apart, even a hand tool. There are so many working parts 
even in the most basic of hand tools, well, not in a screwdriver, uh, but you know, if it's a, if it's a, a tool that has adjustment, I think it's great to be able to know how to use it. I'm having a quick read. Vestal does not plans or Vix bits. <laughs> of course they don't. Nobody got that one, Steve. Uh, I have an Indian mate, um, made Stanley. Indian made Stanley, equivalent that would make a nice sinker. Oh dear. All right, I'm gonna slide back up through the chat a little bit and see what we've got here. Probably not a lot, but that's fine. Uh, Northeast Outdoors Morning, or Brian here with regard to Bailey Stanley. I think Bailey originally designed the plane in the mid 1800s and Stanley bought the patent. Well, Northeast Outdoors, that's great. I'm glad of the information, but you must go over to the corner because you're late. Now, you can let the other guys, I think Gary's over there, he's probably showing everyone his hand and, you know, his little Zorro sign on his hand. You know, what a poser. <laughs> Poor old Gary, he's got Viking's disease, where the tendons shrink up, and it never happened to him until he reached 60 years old. That's just amazing. But what happens is the tendons shrink, and then a finger will start slightly pulling forward, and there's nothing he can do about it. So he's just had surgery and fixed it up, and hopefully he'll be back in his shed, workshop, wood shop, and carving again, because he does some really nice stuff, and you should have a look at the models he makes as well. All right. Sliding all the way down here. Steve, uh, just joking, guys. Uh, you're in the naughty corner as well. Uh, fixed bit also comes to fit. I don't know if they do. I don't know. I don't know. Um, northeast. Uh, which corner all seem <laughs> to be occupied? Okay. All right, let me have a look. What was that last minute for you? Don't type a message with multiple dollar in a row. It appears that it doesn't post the message. Well, there you go. No, probably not. I don't know how that works around the edges. If you want to give me multiple dollars, by all means, <laughs> jump straight in. Now let's have a look at John's video. Now I've got a couple here. Um, 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 um. This one, now I'm hoping this is his dust brush. Now, last week I played this video and I'm watching the sound tracking at the moment as well. So there is no sound coming through other than me. Now, this is John's uh, little miter station that he's made with a Makita docking saw or drop saw or comp sliding compound miter saw. And you'll see that the rails are hungry and they, he's made a box and he's put this brush product there that's from trucks, you know, around the wheels of trucks to stop the, the dirt and things flying off the tires into cars beside them. There it is there. And he's made a little adapter. On the left-hand side, you'll see there's that adapter that it slides into. Very, very clever. So he's made a bit of a dustproof area there so that uh, it'll be, you know, easy. And we'll jump straight into the next one. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Now I've got a thing here, it says John CNC. I don't know if it's gonna show it or not. Maybe not. Maybe, well, I don't know why it's not showing it. Maybe this uh, camera setup is a little bit dodgy. Could be the program has just said to me, maybe you haven't made the video in the correct manner. It only likes MP4s, it doesn't like WMVs. There you go. Okay. Scratching my ear. Louis should have it. He's Viking for, yes. Uh, George, uh, 22NR. George Piera. George, how are you? Oh, the iMuffs. Let's do the winner of the iMuffs competition. Now, the person, while well, George is here, so he can hear the drum roll. Okay, now. One lucky viewer is going to wear this pair, or going to wear, they're going to wear them, of course, but they're going to win this pair of eye muffs. Now, George very, very generously sent a few pairs up to me. I said, you know what? 
I think I'll share the love. Here's a replacement lens. It's coming with this pair of sky blue eye muffs. And aren't they fantastic? Now, are you all, are you all, are you all really excited? <laughs> Here we go. Uh, if you are got the initials LD, you are very, very close to winning. And if your first name happens to be Lan, L-A-R-N, and surname Davies, you are the winner. Now, I will send you an email, Lan, and we'll arrange the delivery. So I will post these out to you. But free cheers for Lan, hey? Now, everyone else is probably saying, oh, oh, don't, don't panic. Look, we might do some other giveaways further down the track. I enjoy doing it. And I'm sure you guys enjoy doing it, the excitement of, you know, possibly winning and, uh, and Lan actually winning. Now, what's the next thing? Let's move on. Hold on a second. I'll have a quick look. Um, good luck, viewers. Yeah, Steve's. Uh, hi, George. I bought your eye muffs. And I, your invoice was number seven. Ta-da. Yep. Yeah, okay. No envelope. No. Not even a barrel girl. You know, remember those from Saturday night shows? Turn the barrel, hand in, pull out, the, and the winner is... No. I have a thing called Rafflecopter. Now, Rafflecopter is an online sweepstake program that's free. The way that I use it, it's free. You can, you know, pay for it and get it to do all sorts of whiz-bang things and collect all this information about people. I don't want to do that. I just want it to make a selection for me. So, I think there were 66 entries which is a bit lame. I would have expected a few more. You know, I'm giving something away. And I say, pick a winner. And next thing you know, there's a name pops up in front of me. And uh, so Alan was the name. And, oh, well, there you go. George is going to just very generously said he's going to send some more up for me to give away. So we'll do that as well. Um, there we go. There we go. Lan Davies, you're here. Woohoo, thank you. That's not a problem at all, buddy. As I say, I'll send you an email and... Uh, and I'll flick them out to you. Now, the reason I'm not saying to you, send me an email, because anyone could immediately make up a false email calling it lundavies at gmail.com and flick to me and say, my address <laughs> is such and such. And I'd post it out to the wrong guy. Am I the only one that thinks like that? I'm sure I'm not. Okay, next thing, next thing, next thing. We're going to slide over to John Lafferty's stuff. Um... Uh, the email straight at that. Okay, you guys have a chat. Uh, and uh, I've, I've tried to read through the things again here. The first time winning anything, thanks, David. Again. That's not a problem, buddy. I enjoy doing it. I like It's like being Santa, you know, handing out the presents at Christmas time. Um, yeah, it's good fun. Okay, I'm going to switch the cameras around again. And we'll have a look over here. I'm going to have a little bit of a drink as we're going. Hey, Northeast Outdoors, you can't talk. You were in the corner still. Didn't you know that that's one of the one of the things about being in the corner? You can't make any comment. <laughs> All right. So now that I have that plane all put together, how about we put some of John's product to the test? Now, I have a box here, a Festool sustainer. This is a Sys1. And... Every time John sent something up to me, I would pop it in here. Look at that. <laughs> How cool is this? I love it. That brush stuff that we were just looking at. There it is. In the flesh. It's even got little counter sinks for the screws to go into. On the side there, you just slide the brush tape in, into there, and away you go. See, it slides out. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. He's a very clever man. And you can push it up there. So that's one thing. Off to the side. Now, see this guy. These are 96 millimeter centers, which is exactly the same spacing as an MFT3 or the Stanton bench. Now, obviously, I'm going to tell you it's going to work a whole lot better with a Stanton bench. But that would be lying. It's going to work just as well with a Stanton bench or an MFT3. Now, I'm going to put back here. I'll turn the camera around ever so slightly. How's that looking? Now, I'm going to put these there. And isn't that a magic fit? 
and I'm going to put one of his 20 millimeter dogs there. And I've got a piece of timber here and I can plane that. Now, if that piece of timber was a little bit unruly, I could also use his clamps. And I'll pop that one in there and I'll show you one. These are a cam clamp. And all of these things are available on at yellowboxshed.com.au. So you just drop into there and knock yourself out. I am now going to put my hand over here because I don't want to hide anything. I'm just going to hold the timber in position while I clamp it. Look at that. I can't move it. It's held, it's held, it's held. I don't need to put those cam clamps in, but I thought, you know, why not? And let's get the plane. And let's tip that camera up a little bit and come in a bit closer, maybe. About there. And a little bit closer. How's that? That's probably a little bit easier to see. There we go. Now, I've just taken the plane out with a blue handle from Yellow Box Shed and back it off a little bit. This is, this is the way you can adjust. If, you, if you're not sure about it, you take it so it's just all the way out. And then you turn it back down again until you feel the tension start to take up. Look at that. Look how fine those shavings are. And it's just holding beautifully. Oh, isn't it? Doing a beautiful job. I need to adjust it across ever so much. Ever so slightly. Now, have you noticed that while I've been doing that, how nice is that? That while I've been doing that, John's gear has been holding the timber down perfectly for me. But at the same time, my bench is not anchored in any way to the top of the bench it's sitting on. It's the anti-slip cushion strip material that's built into the design and also under the feet. Now, John also has, and I can't see them around here at the moment, full legs. The legs can screw in to the underside of the Stanton bench as well. So there's a leg point right here underneath. And let's have a look. I'll show you underneath there. I'm using those guys, bench cookies. Now they do not slip. They've got a rut, they've got an anti-slip material underneath like they've got on the top there. See that? So John has also made with his 3D printer legs that will screw straight into this with a 5 16th thread. Just amazing. So there's the first couple of things. I'll put them to the side. And his new models, when he sent these up to me, I said, you know, John, sometimes it's a bit hard to get these up. You know, this isn't so hard. So he's created some little rebates here. So you can get your fingers under them to pull it up, which is brilliant. Next thing, next thing. Oh yeah, he's got these little guys here that work fantastic. Now the other good thing is John is aware that people have three quarter inch um, dogs and they're saying, how the hell can I build a stamp and bench with 20 mil if I've got three quarter inch dogs? These are a spacer. They, believe it or not, are a half a millimeter wall thickness. Or just under it. John's brilliant with CAD. So they go in to there and they take up the slack. Brilliant. Um, these little guys, let me see if I can find one of these. It's just a little tiny dog. Goes in. A painting cap that goes on. Whoop, I've gone too far away. Let me just bring that back down a little. There we go. That's going to be better. I'll do that one again. Okay, these little guys are a 20 mil dog. In it goes. And these are a little painting caps. So I can have these set out, put something on top to paint it. Brilliant. Um, it does not stop there, my friends. It does not stop there. He's got tall dogs for rails. 
that have got a thread printed into the underside. So you can use it in conjunction with any of the, the clamps, the hold down clamps that are made. What else have we got? Okay, okay. Um, I start, I get, I'm starting to get a little bit excited here. Now, you all know that I love Festool products and I'm not, I'm not um, paid by Festool to say that. I just enjoy their product. On the back of their tracks is a slot and there's one on the top as well. Now, a lot of people like to be able to hold a track in position by using the hole pattern in the Stanton bench or on an MFT3. These guys here that John's made are designed, you ready? To slide in to there. And you notice I struggled a little bit to put it in here. He's made the tolerances on those unbelievably strong. Now I said to John, I'm concerned that it's going to snap. The plastic will snap. He said, no, there's no way it's going to snap. You really have to want to break it to snap it off. But they hold him beautifully. So they go in. <coughs> like so. Now it's going to hold the track in position. And you're going to say to me, well, Dave, that's great. I can move it all over the place. Well, you can. You can pivot it. But the other thing is you can put another one in at the other end. And lo and behold, what's this? That's a collar. <laughs> He's designed these collars that can go on. And those collars just happen to be the same diameter as the top of these guys. It's the same. Now, for anyone who's used a board, a, a dog hold board of any sort, you will see straight away, that's a plus. I can use it without, or I can use it with. So that goes on. It slides to whatever point I want. It will fall to the position. So you would sit this on top of a piece of timber in the dog holes. As you lower it down to touch the top of the timber, piece of timber underneath, it will then automatically drop that ring onto the top of the board. So it will line up if I have these small dogs off to the side to support the timber. So when I'm doing a 90 degree cut. Now, if you don't think that's amazing enough, if you don't think that's amazing enough, watch this. How easy are they? Look at this. Blow me down. He's made 20 mil external diameter threaded sections. And these are a round nut that travel up and down the shaft. Will those posts fit in a Makita track? I do not know. Makita, I'm sorry, um, it might do. You'd have to. I don't own a Makita track. I know they'll work with Triton, Festool, and yes, Makita. I'm pretty sure they will. Uh, I don't think they'll work in DeWalt. They won't work with Craig and they won't work with, um, oh, there's another Bosch, I think. I don't think they'll work with Bosch, but how good are they? And they slide in as well. And you notice I have to turn them as I'm pushing them in. That's because it's got fantastic tolerances. But look at that. You guys out there are going to look at this and you're going to think, what the hell? I don't do not see any rest for John. Yellow box is going to take off. You know what? It will. Those bench cookie risers don't flex. No, they do not. These things are solid as. I can't believe it. I, it was one of those things. When John sent them up to me to test, I was blown away how good they were. I couldn't, you know, I've got the stainless steel ones. I've got the aluminium ones. And I've got these. Now, I haven't been using these on purpose because I don't didn't want to water down John's launch of these things. They're brilliant. Now, are you excited? Because you're going to get even, <laughs> even more excited. I'll tell you what, it's never going to stop. First thing we're going to do before I get to the big crescendo is I'm going to show you this. Now, John also does a fair bit of CNC cutting. He's got a 3D printer because he's so good with CAD. Fusion 360, um, he's going to, uh, 
He's, he's going to go stupid. This is the next thing that arrived. Look at that. Now you're going to say, what the hell is that, Dave? Well, I'm going to show you. These are MFT SP bench or buddies. Now these things look like, you know, a transformer insignia. And people will probably stick these to the back of their cars. And, and good luck to them. But the thing is that I'm showing you here is the insert. John made that insert. And this is high quality. This is not crappy foam. This is bloody nice. This is almost like wetsuit material. There's four of them in here. I don't know if this is a product that's actually hit the market with John yet, but i tell you what. I had a word to him last night and he said the foam cutting, Dave, I really want people to see the foam cutting. So I'm going to take the foam out and you can see how good that is. Now this is super, super good. And look, he's even run a, looks like a three quarter inch round over cutter, is it John? Or a, or a five eighth around the base so it doesn't catch anything. And the, and the cutout is perfect for a mini sustainer. And he can do this for or anything. Do I sound like I'm going over the top? What if I do? I'm sorry, but I'll tell you what, I reckon it deserves it. That is brilliant. Okay, it leads me to the next thing. What the hell are these things? Here we go. I'm coming over the other side here. Yellow Box got me hooked, very smart man. Joe, awesome John, will order after the show. Now, if I haven't put a link here, go to my Facebook site. I will put a link in after the show if it's not there already. So if anyone can have a quick look for me, have a look down, see if I've got a link there. No three quarter inch, as I said, you don't need. You don't have to worry. These are your spacers from three quarter to 20 millimeters. He makes these. These are 30 cents each. That's it. He's doing a fantastic job. If I, as again, if I sound like I'm going over the top, it's only because I'm so excited about it all. Now, where are my clamps? Where are we? Where are we? I'm off camera a little bit. Sorry about that. All right. Now you all know what these things are. These are called MFT clamping elements. So there's the receiver. This one is the clamp. Now, if I want to, if I want to, I need some more space. If I want to, I can hold things using these things. And you're going to say, well, yeah, good. Watch this. What do you think of that? Now, this is, this is a little invention that Steve Innes has come up with. So you've seen Steve on the, on the chat and also on Facebook. He's got Steve's um, Festool Shed Talk. <clears throat> Sorry, I need a bit more to drink. I'm talking too much. <clears throat> What's that? I think he meant, does he make the accessories for three quarter inch posts? I'm sure he can. All you got to do is ask John. Send him an email. He's a wizard. He wears a special hat, you know, a pointy hat. Um, and it, sometimes it's the sorting hat. I don't know. And if it's a sorting hat, it's not the one that sends everyone to the corner. It's the one who's the very smart fellow and can sit up the front with all the teachers. Now, this thing is brilliant and Steve's still developing it. And this is the receiver and, oh, look, there it goes. How cool is that? So here we go, I'm gonna show you it in application. Uh, let me see, if I put that there, other way around, David, like so. And that one there. I, May not have enough distance there, so I'll bring it over here. That's a good thing about these benches. You can just pop things wherever you want, so I can push it like so. Look at that. Can you see that? Now I'm going to put a couple of pieces of timber in there. So I've got some 16 millimeter. I have to move all these things. It's just, I'm like a kid at Christmas time. All my toys all over the place. We haven't finished yet. There's going to be more. There's going to be more, 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 more. Okay, so I've got a piece of three quarter that I can put in there and a piece of quarter that I can put there. That's not going to be great for the camera, but I'll tell you what, I'll push it together there anyway. And you can see I've got the corner held straight away. I'm going to move it to another section so that you can see it pushed together. Let's move it from... 
there to there. That might work. Just so that you can see what's happening. Actually, I'll try and move it in a little bit. I'll bring the camera closer. How's that? All right, you can see it in full on action now. So this one. No, that's not gonna work either. I'm gonna do it the long ways up here. There and there. That should be better. Camera's too close now. Oh, the joys of life. There we go. This bad boy there. And this one here. Push the joint up. And it's gonna find itself. It doesn't really care. Okay, so. There we go. How good is that? It's, it ain't going anywhere. I'm pushing on that. So now I can push that joint together. Let's relax it. Pull that back this way. Push them up. Like so. Done. That is so good. I'm going to do something I haven't done before. I'm going to take the camera off the stick and move it around the back of the box there and give you some tracking all the way around. So there you go. You can see it's locked into the Stanton bench and then up over the top of the joint. So I can do all of my fixings. I can put screws through there if I want to, or nails, or I could use a Craig pocket screw through there, into there, and it's all holding it tight. And then over the top and down on the inside. You can see it's all out of the way. Now then we're going to move on to the next thing. Oh, gee. <laughs> All right. Now if you want to order anything, if you want, if you want to order anything, I'll just twitch this up a little. Here we go. Now if you want to order any of John's things, by all means, just jump in and do it. If you want to get a special deal, if you want five percent off, type Dave Five D A V E Five, the number five and you get a 5% discount as well, just for people watching this show. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So jump in and do that if you're interested. You can do that, as I said, you can forward this on to anyone, you know, send a link to this show to, to your friends and they can watch the whole thing demonstrated rather than you saying, well, you know what? John made these things that, uh, yeah, they're plastic and I found them in a cornflakes packet and, uh, you know, it's rubbish. Show me showing it and they'll get the whole idea because sometimes, you know, it's like if you tell someone a joke, and they'll tell that joke to someone and they'll tell the other joke to someone and that, that person will tell it. And by the time the end of the <laughs> Chinese whispers, it's, it's not going to work as well. So show them this video, send them a link. Give me a thumbs up, of course, because this is fantastic. This is great. Am I looking excited again? I'll tell you what, there's another thing. Here we go. I'll grab the other part for it. Now, John has thought I can expand on this and he has. <laughs> All right, I'm going to undo that. You see how they relaxed just then when I did that? I can bring this back to here. He's made an adapter. That drops into there. And then I can put another thing in there if I want to. Now, this would be if I'm not doing things quite as high. So I'm doing some flat stuff. A, for instance, let me see if I've got another piece of timber lying around. So I could put a joint in there. I haven't got it opened up really well enough for doing this, but I could have this mitered and there, put that in and have another mitered section. So I could clamp up a few of them in one run and then either just have it glued and dominoed together, or I could pocket hole it together, get all that done. And then last thing, put them all together, clamp them up at the end as well if I wanted to. All right, now I did mention that there was going to be more. You want more, you want more, you want more. I do. What's the next thing? And how cool are they? I love it. Oh, didn't, don't they go in that box well? I'm gonna put them back in because that's one of the highlights. We're nearly done for time, but I, I um, see that straight in. He's done such a good job of the machine. I guess that's what you call it. Would you call this machining? I guess it is printing, um, cutting. I bet you John was one of the kids at school that all his coloring in was always inside the lines. Very neat. 
turn this one around. And there we go. How nice. Wouldn't that blow you away if someone gave you that for Christmas? That little setup. <laughs> You're on fire, Dave. Uh, please, sir, can I have some more? Yes, you can. You can indeed. We got the climax of the show is about to happen. It's about to happen. Now, for those of you on the uh, chat, you'll know that Steve has been doing some stuff. And he made, he made a little thing to work with his TSO GRS. Now, these things are brilliant. This is a TSO GRS 16 PE, which means parallel edge, which means I can clamp it to my track to work from the front, or from the front of it or from the back of it. So I can work off a wall. And for people that don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry. Now, basically, it slides on to a track like so. I've done a video on it. You can have a look. And here we go. There we go. There into that little spot. That. And I can show you on my video how that is the squarest of squares that I've ever owned. I was looking to buy a square that was four feet long uh, so I could square across sheets of plywood, gyprock, melamine, whatever I wanted. I thought, that's great. What a great idea. So I got in touch with TSO products and they sent me a couple of these over. I gave one of them away on the show and I think it was Tom in Ireland and he loves it, uses it all the time. Now, I have noticed, like Steve and like John have noticed, and a lot of us, there are a couple of holes that are threaded. And we were thinking, what is going on there? And I even said to Eric, I think it was, what are the holes for? And they said, oh, well, you know, it's part of the process and we might have something in the future. Well, look at this. This is the future. Why am I happy about that? Well, when you put a rail on there, it can drop down. See, it's dropping down here ever so slightly. If it was held up flat, and if I had a way of holding it without pushing it down as I'm pushing my track saw across, that would be fantastic. So Steve put his thinking cap on and he got in touch with John and said, John, why don't you make a handle for it? Now you'll see this handle has got a rebate as well here. And that's to allow for this to go onto there and then that that's the perfect plane when it's on I'll, I'll screw it on and you'll see so it just pushes up against the edge you're not watching this are you i'll turn it around the right way so you can see that's half the joy of video Dave. half the joy of live is watch it going together that goes there like so i'm going to screw that on just a phillips head screw is it going in yep nice you don't have to go crazy but the machining again how good is the machining the tolerances are fantastic done how strong is it you were asking how strong the plastic is very is the answer and you can see that's the underside and there's a rebate there i'm, I'm trying to work the cameras there i've got the angle and it comes in a beautiful color of blue you can get it in any color you want. But blue is nice because it matches there. And that is not affecting the parallel. That's keeping it dead flat to the bench. Because otherwise, if it was twisting it one way or the other, you may end up having a non 90 degree cut here. So this edge, you always want it to be 90 degrees. And there it is. You hold it like so, run your track saw through the distance from here back to here is not going to have any impact on the TS55's motor. It's away from it. Don't believe me? I'll grab one, I'll show you. Here's my TS55, beautiful track saw. And you can see the distance from there to there. I can put my hand in between. So when I do a plunge, it's not gonna worry it. I'll be able to go all the way past at this end, or at the other end. It's making no difference. Alrighty, I think that's gonna do it, guys. Are you impressed? I'll tell you what, when these things were just dribbling up to me, I thought, you know, I don't know. But then the, as the guys got their heads together a little bit better, you know, it was just amazing. The, 
the things that were coming out of their minds, they, it's, it's like they were on drugs. <laughs> I switch cameras. Here we go. Is it working or not? No, that one's not working. Why not? I'll have to just switch the other camera around. You can look at me looking stupid if you wish, but I'll switch the other camera around this way. It might come up a little bit darker. Don't worry about it. Ah, here we go. I'm going to switch them over. There we go. Um, I don't. Maybe the camera has been disconnected. It's showing it's got a light there. The only way for me to fix that is to actually turn the show off and start it again, which I am not going to do at this stage of the day. There we go. All right. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. I'm hoping everyone's doing the thumbs up. Uh, the handle works for both TS55 and a TS. C55 uh, saws are a little different. You can use either. Indeed, you can. Uh, <laughs> Jay Barry, you enjoyed the show. Buddy Angle Dave. Oh, yes, yes, it's a uh, Buddy Angle. There we go. Is it? <laughs> cool. Um, I'm going to switch this up a little. It's coming in pretty close on me, that one. I don't know why. There we go. That's got to be a bit better. Um, now, the reason that camera is showing me as being darker is because I've set the levels <clears throat> on that camera for when I'm doing demonstration work so you don't get a whole lot of glare and flare bouncing back up off the bench. If I lean back a little bit, no, nah, it'll be fine. Look, let's just make out I'm a bronzed Australian. Now, bronzed Australians, there's one thing that I do want to talk about, it's quite serious. Next week, I'm off to the skin guy. So I spent many, many years as a sports photographer and as a carpenter on site. So I was exposed to the sun a whole lot before we had too much information about throwing hats on and all that kind of stuff. So he's a skin cancer specialist. Um, I have a spot that I think I need to have a look at. And while he's there, you know, he does a full body scan for you at the same time. So if I rock up on the show next week with little bits out of my face, <laughs> Don't be too shocked. I hope I hope it doesn't happen. But if he says, yeah, Dave, I think we've got to burn this one off. We're going to do that. Uh, you can end up looking pretty horrible. So we'll see. So fingers crossed for me that uh, it's all good. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. It's the same as with uh, Movember, Men's Health Awareness. Um, <clears throat> the, pardon me. The, the Australian sun um, is, you know, it's the same sun as everyone's got, but I'll tell you what, uh, in Australia, there's a whole lot of people die from skin cancer. So if you're like me and if you've been exposed to the sun an awful lot, get along and you've lost sound, have you? Surely not. Have you lost sound? No. Uh, sounds good here, John. Okay. If you're like me and you've been out in the sun a lot, get along, get checked. Because if it's something small, they can look after you. If you leave it too long, same as everything, it's going to be a bloody nightmare for you. So thanks for watching. Keep on coming back. Give me a thumbs up if you like the show. Subscribe to the channel. Share this show around because I only leave them up for a week. I might leave this one up a little bit longer. If you want to watch any of the previous shows, I have them on the other channel. Down in the description box, check it all out. I hope everything goes okay for you, Dave. Uh, sunspots can be dangerous. Thanks, Darren. Um, uh, okay, sound <laughs> loss was you. Uh, no, okay. Uh, good, hope the skin check goes well. Yes, so do I. I worked with a couple of people who had cream for skin cancers, which turned their face red. I have seen that happen before. And, you know, if it happens, it happens. I, I mean, to go with the flow, I don't want to be an idiot about this. Last time I saw him, he said, yeah, all's fine. And he took a spot off and back. And as I said, I found another one. So, and it's a good idea as well. Like, don't go checking yourself all the, all the time. But um, Vicky spotted it for me. She, you know, I was having a shower and she said, there's a spot there I think you should have a look at. All right, fine, done. So there we go. Okay, thanks. Good luck, Dave. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, look, I shall see you next week. Maybe with spots all over the place. So I'm sorry about I'm giving you a fair warning already. Thanks for watching and I shall see you next time. Bye.